Oh. A wild classroom of eco geeks exploring biodiversity. The world is a beautiful mystery. Life learning and discovery. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. It's about the Oahu tree snails. So on the islands of Hawaii, actually just on the island of Oahu, there lives the native Akitanella tree snails. Now these are an entire family of snails that aren't found anywhere else in the world. And the snails, they're pretty diverse too. Scientists have found at least 40 different species, and each one of those has its own brilliant pattern. So by and large, most species are isolated on one mountain ridge. Now see, the geography determines climatic patterns, and climate determines species ranges. And well, if you're a snail and you can't get to the next ridge, then your population is split. You're isolated, and then this isolation and genetic drift gives rise to a new species. Now these snails, however, didn't evolve like other snails. Remember, Hawaii had no... They evolved with no competitors, and they evolved with no predators. And as a result, they became pretty weak. Heck, you've got a whole family of snails that gives birth to one or a few young, but only after they've lived six or seven years. Now that's pretty unique. Most snails lay thousands of eggs. That means the Oahu tree snail population will grow a lot slower than a normal snail. And that would have been all fine and dandy until they released a predator. That would be the wolf snail. It was a predatory snail introduced from Florida in an effort to control the giant African snails beastly snails. Now this wouldn't have been a problem if the snail only followed the slime trail of the African snail. Unfortunately for the Oahu tree snails, found an appetite for them too. century, the wolf snails, rats, in combination with habitat loss from human encroachment, have exterminated all but only six or seven of these native Oahu tree snails. From 41 species to only six or seven, that's ridiculous. Only a couple of these species are still found in isolated patches of the forest. The remaining species live in a rearing facility in a small refrigerator on the campus of the University of Hawaii. They're in little containers and they're misted three times a day to replicate the rain and they have a little light on the inner door. That's there to simulate the sun. It's all done by scientists in an effort to breed these guys, in an effort to someday reintroduce them back into the wild. For more information, go to thewildclassroom.com. This episode is brought to you after our short trip to England. We're sorry for the delay, but we were attending the Wildlife Film Festival in Bristol. And yes, those are giant pandas hugging Sir David Attenborough. Tristan Bear and you are watching Eco Geeks.